As you can tell, I am not filming at the studio anymore. I'm recording this from home because as most will know, and if you don't, Ontario has announced a non-essential business shutdown, which means we are keeping things going, but we are doing it from home. Our studio is closed, but we will not stop producing videos for you guys because we love it. This is our passion and we do it for you guys. So we will keep making videos but we will be self-isolating. Social distancing for the win. It is safe to say that the 2010s was one of the greatest decades for horror cinema, with the likes of Get Out, It Follows, Hereditary, The Cabin in the Woods, and The Conjuring gracing our screens. However, there were a ton of terrifying horrors that were overshadowed by the aforementioned heavy hitters. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm gonna be counting down our list of the top five scary forgotten horror movies from the 2010s. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. And with that, let's jump in. Coming in at number five, we have The Invitation 2015. The Invitation is a 2015 horror thriller film directed by Karen Kusama and stars Logan Marshall Green, Tammy Blanchard, and Michael Hoosman from The Haunting of Hill House. Responding to an invitation from his ex-wife, a man brings his girlfriend to a dinner party. There, he relives the trauma of their child's death and becomes suspicious that his ex-wife has ulterior motives for inviting him. The invitation is an insidiously subtle nightmare in which you are constantly going back and forth in your head. Is there something wrong at this party? Or is there something wrong with me? The movie manages to torture our minds from start to finish with its constant sense of unease and uncomfortable social interactions. The Invitation holds an 88% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, with the critical consensus reading, The Invitation makes brilliant use of its tension-rich premise to deliver a uniquely effective and surprisingly clever slow-building thriller. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you get invited to a dinner party, just say no. Lucky for us, we're all self-isolating. Social distance. Coming in at number four, we have Attack the Block 2011. Attack the Block is a 2011 British science fiction horror comedy film written and directed by Joe Cornish and starring John Boyega, Jodie Whittaker, and Nick Frost. The film centers on a teenage street gang who have to defend themselves from predatory alien invaders on a council estate in South London on Guy Fawkes Night. Attack the Block is an effective genre mashup that blends sci-fi and comedy with creature feature horror, with the movie offering up immense tension as well as tons of laughs and engaging social commentary. Attack Attack the Block received critical acclaim from critics, with it receiving a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, with a consensus reading, effortlessly mixing scares, laughs, and social commentary, Attack the Block is a thrilling, brisky paced sci-fi yarn with a distinctly British flavour. Attack the Block is a movie that has something for everyone. It is also the place Star Wars star John Boyega got his start, making it a movie you should definitely take a look at. Attack the Block was revisited by critics following the casting of its two lead actors as stars of flagship science fiction franchises. As I mentioned, Boyega in Star Wars and Whittaker in Doctor Who. In a 2017 retrospective, Tom Phillips writing for GQ described the film as, I quote, one of the most confidently delivered debut feature films in recent memory. It still stands out as one of the best genre mashup films of the decade. It is definitely worth your time. Coming in at number three, we have Maniac 2013. Maniac is a 2013 slasher film directed by Frank Calhoun and starring Elijah Wood and Nora Arnizada. It is a remake of the 1980 film of the same name and follows the violent exploits of a brutal serial killer. The movie is completely faithful to William Lustig's controversial film while simultaneously doubling down on violence and delivering a pulverizing slasher. Maniac is a solid revival of a genre that was beginning to feel rather stale. Not to mention, with its throwback synthesizer score and shadowy lighting, the entire movie invokes a sense of dread from start to finish. Now, the movie polarized critics, with it receiving a 53% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, with the consensus reading, shocking and bloody, Maniac is smarter than your average psychological slasher, but it's often undermined by its excessive gore. Now, some audience members had quite the visceral reaction when viewing the movie for the first time. Calhoun said that audience members have vomited and 
even fainted, and he took the reaction as a compliment, explaining, we had a screening here in Los Angeles and somebody passed out, which I pat myself on the back for. The movie had to creep on you. It's a different kind of fear. It's more of a nauseating fear. You really have the opportunity to maybe feel the nausea of committing crime, rather than glorifying it just for the aspect of fun and thrill. The audience gets to experience for the first time how sick it is to commit a murder. We're certainly not condoning it, but making a real statement about serial killers. Coming in at number two, we have What We Do in the Shadows 2015. What We Do in the Shadows is a 2015 New Zealand mockumentary horror comedy film written and directed by Jermaine Clement and Taika Waititi, and the first installment in the What We Do in the Shadows franchise. The film's plot concerns several vampires who live together in a flat in Wellington. Now, modern spoofs that are genuinely good are pretty hard to come by, with most of them flopping and flopping hard. However, what we do in the shadows is a comedy and horror masterpiece. The movie itself is a docu-style story of idiotic vampires. What's better than that? Yes. I did say it was a modern spoof film, however, it doesn't overtly reference any specific horror movies, but instead makes jokes of all the tropes and cliches in classic vampire horror movies. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of 96%, with the general consensus reading, smarter, fresher, and funnier than a modern vampire movie has any right to be. What we do in the shadows is bloody good fun. Ultimately, what makes What We Do in the Shadows so great is that it was made for us, horror fans, and it isn't pandering to anyone else, not to mention, it gets better and better the more times you watch it. Not to mention, Taika Waititi. It was essentially what gave him his big break. He's now doing Marvel, and he also did Jojo Rabbit, which if you haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, I suggest you watch Jojo Rabbit. Should I say it one more time? Jojo Rabbit. And finally, coming in at number one, we have The Witch. 2016. The Witch is a 2016 supernatural horror film written and directed by Robert Eggers in his feature directorial debut. The film stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Ralph Innocent, Kate Dickey, and Lucas Dawson. The plot follows a Puritan family who encounter forces of evil in the woods beyond their New England farm. The Witch is an incredibly effective movie that manages to make twin children and a billy goat some of the most terrifying villains of the movie. Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? The witch relies on unsettling fear to instill dread. Rather than relying on jump scares or overt scare tactics, the movie is a slow burn. However, from start to finish, you're hooked and can't pull your eyes away from the screen. The film was a critical success, with it receiving an approval rating of 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, with the general consensus reading. As thought-provoking as it is visually compelling, the witch delivers a deeply unsettling exercise in slow-building horror that suggests great things for debuting writer director to Rob Eggers. Between Anya Taylor-Joy's mesmerizing performance, my friend Daniel's as the devil himself, shout out Daniel, and the ominous entity in the woods, I'm seeking out Black Phillip's book to sign right about now. Now it is safe to say that The Witch is a love it or hate it kind of movie, considering its pace and lack of overt scares. However, Leslie Coffin criticized A24 for this, saying that it was a huge mistake to market the movie as a terrifying horror, not because it doesn't fit into the genre of horror, but because of the power of expectations. The less you know about the movie, the better your experience will be. But everyone who saw it opening weekend probably walked in with too much knowledge and hype to really get as much out of it as they could have if the film had the veil of mystery. I honestly couldn't have said it better myself. First time I watched The Witch, I knew nothing, nothing at all about it, and I loved every single minute of it. But I also understand that a slow burn with not many jump scares isn't for everyone. Most people look for quick pace with horror, but The Witch will never offer that to you. But that's what makes it so effective. It's slow, it's eerie, there's not a lot of dialogue. That is what makes it so creepy. What exactly is in the woods, and why is this Billy Goat and why is this Billy Goat, Black Philip, so terrifying? And more importantly, why is he talking? And now, why is he a man? Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any forgotten horror movies that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top five scariest Lovecraftian gods from cosmic horror. Black Cavalia said, stop waving your hands. I like to wave my hands. It means I'm very expressive and I'm passionate about what I'm saying, but I bet you're glad I'm doing voiceover right about now. If only you could see behind this microphone. I am waving my hands. Charlie Edwards said, not into horror in general, but I'm a huge fan of Lovecraft. More please. Well, 
hopefully we change your mind about horror in general, but we do have lots and lots and lots of Lovecraft videos for you to feast upon. I think we even have a playlist. Check it out. Cabal887 said, Ah, I love a video where Lucy talks about her fellow cosmic entities. They're not my fellow entities, they're my minions. Abnathan said, I'm actually impressed with how you pronounce the name, so you're sure you're not a witch? Uh, I'm not sure. I think we're all witches at the end of the day, but it did take me a long time to practice those Lovecraft pronunciations. Took me two years, to be honest. If only you knew how I originally pronounced Nilothotep. You have no idea. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary bit. And until next time, see you later.